Welcome to the Apostolic Bookshelf, where divine revelations and transformation await. From various corners of the world, remarkable pastors will lead you on an inspiring quest through the pages of life-changing books. These anointed hosts will delve deep into the inspiring works of the renowned Apostle Johnson Sulman, and cover hidden treasures, ignite your spiritual fire, and be empowered to impact your world. Don't miss a single episode of Apostolic Bookshelf. Tune in every Thursday and Saturday and embark on this extraordinary spiritual journey. Get ready to be inspired and transformed like never before on this divine adventure. Apostolic Bookshelf. Discover the depths of divine wisdom. Hello, welcome to Apostolic Bookshelf. Here we explore the insightful and life-changing work of the Restoration Apostle, Apostle Professor Johnson Suleiman. It's our aim here at Apostolic Bookshelf to explore the depth of his profound work, the shared value, the insights, and to encourage a profound discussion among pastors, ministers, and viewers the world over. My name is Paul Chris Salam. I'm your host for today. In today's episode, we're going to be diving into the fascinating and powerful book titled Walking in Power. I believe this is, this is a book that every minister of God needs to have in their shelf. It's very important for you to have it because it's a book that talks about the mechanics of power. Amen. I always say to people that uh, uh, if you want to really understand how God's servant gets to where he is today, you must read the work that they wrote before he stepped into the limelight. This particular book, Walking in Power, is one of those books that you want to get your hand up on and read. And not only read, we read it, mark it, you know, mark it all over and also go back again and read it again. And not only read it, you should also practice it. And I believe it will change the way you look at life and the way you look at power forever. Get ready to be inspired and transformed like never before on this divine adventure. Apostolic Bookshelf. Discover the depths of divine wisdom. In today's episode, we'll focus on the chapter one of Walking in Power, where God's servant apostle Suleiman laid the building blocks for understanding the power of God. We explore uh, the central theme of this chapter includes um, the right act in the acquisition of God's power. And there was a question he asked, what, who, what do you seek? What do you seek? And also there's another part of the chapter that talks about God doesn't have a favorite. And the conclusion of the chapter, he made a statement that I love. He said, God can never lift you above your heart level. Now, the first line in chapter one, God's servant made, uh, made a profound statement. Say, your destiny is determined by how organized your heart is. Uh, he said that God desires for us so that we should organize our heart for an ongoing flow of God's power. He said that God has in his kitty, God has planned for this end time church that we have never seen, we have never seen, read, or experience before but for that to happen amen god need people and god needs our heart he said that my heart no no one can walk in power when their heart is not right he gave an example of eli he said eli was the only priest that died dishonorable why because he was he allowed god to correct him instead of him correct what he's supposed to correct um, he said, God, I've chosen this end time to move, but for God to move, he need a mover. See, there is no move without a mover. Amen. God cannot move this end time without someone praying for God to move. And he said that um, uh, for us to walk in power, uh, our heart is a determined factor. He said that most people have this misunderstanding of what power is. They fail to understand the place of a right art in the acquisition of God's power. He went further to talk about Samuel. He talks about Samuel miscalculation of David because Simon was looking at the physical future of the sons of Jesse. He forgot to understand and know that God not look at how men looks rather God looks at the heart. So David took him by surprise because David uh, was not someone they was looking for and what qualified David? What was the determining factor was his heart. Get ready to be inspired and transformed like never before on this divine adventure. Apostolic Bookshelf. 
Discover the depths of divine wisdom. He said a generation that will move their world is a generation whose heart will seek their God. What you seek in life determine what you get, he said. He said that many claim to be pursuing God when their heart is actually pursuing all the things. He said our heart is our life and its pursuit is our destiny. Our significance in life is determined by our pursuit. A question, are you hungry? And then a question, what you're hungry for is what you're going to be filled with. Until you're hungry for the right thing, you can be filled with the right thing. He gave an example of Leah in Genesis 29, 32, 35. She was hungry for recognition. She wanted her husband to notice her, and rightfully so, because she was the first wife. But still, she didn't get her recognition. What, she, what did she do? She didn't give up. The Bible says she, um, although she was ignored, she gave back to her first child called Reuben, which means, husband, you must see me. See me. Husband still didn't see her. Uh, she went far, further to give birth to a child called Simeon. Simeon means, hear me. In other words, she was saying that, husband, I have given birth to a first child. He did not see me. Now you must hear me because I gave birth to a second one. I gave birth to a third one again because she was ignoring me. Mean, join me. In other words, say, my husband, you have ignored me the first two times, but now you should join me. And still yet, the husband didn't recognize her. She went forth to give birth to a third or fourth child called Judah. This time, she decided to say, so, okay, since my husband is not hearing me, so let me give birth to another child called, called Praise. And if you if you look at the life if you look at the life of Leah if you look at the connection from Leah to David to Jesus you understand that Jesus came through the lineage of Judah and Leah was the mother of Judah. The resurrection apostle hit the nail on the head when he gave us a shortcut to walking in power. This is really amazing. He talks about the connection of the heart to service. He said that service is not service if the one that is serving want to be served. Jesus himself that I did not come to serve but to be served. Um, the difference between Apostle Paul and many apostles, Apostle Paul and many people in our generation, um, Apostle Paul said in Acts chapter 9 verse 6, he said, what do you have me do when God saw him, when God met him on the way to Damascus? And God said, and said there are two kinds of prayer. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme give is a prayer for children. And Lord, what do you have me to do is a prayer for adults. So the question is, what prayer are you praying? Is it the gimme, gimme prayer? Or God, what can I do for you? you know, it's, a, it's very important to understand that, uh, the place of service when it comes to the acquisition of power. That's what God's heaven talks about. So it's very, very important for us to understand that. Get ready to be inspired and transformed like never before on this divine adventure. Epistolic Bookshelf. Discover the depths of divine wisdom. Now it's time to address some of the questions we see from our viewer. And the first question we got from one of our viewers is how to overcome struggle with sin and maintain a holy lifestyle. Now it's very important for us to understand when it comes to overcoming sin. The first you must understand also that the first thing you have done first of all by writing us and um, asking this question first of all I, I i recognize that you have first of all recognized that you have you know that you have an issue you understand and that's the first step recognition and the second step to overcome and sin also is to confess and the third step is to repent because the bible says if you confess your sin it's faithful and just to forgive us so it's a recognition confession and repent and repent and mean making a 360 degree you know, to be from whatever that was, uh, for whatever thing that you were doing that was was not um, right in the eyes of God. So those three things, you two things, first of all, acknowledge, confess, and repent. When it comes to overcoming sin, the other things you organize also um, is the place of accountability. It's very, very important. The Bible said that we should confess our faults one to another. 
um bible said that we should also confess of one to another because uh, when we confess our faults um bible say he's faithful and just to forgive us amen it's very important that um we confess our faults and also um look for someone that um you know someone that can help you overcome whatever you're overcoming it's very important to have partners you know um surround yourself with people that will give you encouragement and also try not to try not to be amongst people that would tempt you from doing what you're trying to get away from like for example if you're a drinker you can you can't say you want to overcome drinking then you go to a bar so surely if you go to a bar you're tempting yourself and there is a 90 percent chance that you can indulge in the same thing you're trying to overcome so it's very important also to understand the environment when it comes to overcoming sin so try to stay away from something or people that will get you back into that habit that you're trying to get away from so it's very important to understand that also the other thing also you should understand also is very important to spend time in the word of god it's very important because what you see all the time determine what you see from life it's very important to understand that time what you con- consistent- consistently put in front of your eyes amen will determine your behavior i was saying to, i've said to people all, all the time that what surrounds you determine what comes out of you and um the book of job says that um that um i have made covenant with my eyes shall not look upon the maiden it means very important also what you watch what you watch very important what you were when you when you want to really overcome sin very important what you watch and the other thing i want to also add to what i just said also it's very important also to to understand the place of the word of god in your life praise god um i challenge people all the time that um you know when you whenever you're going to any kind of stuff that has to do with sin engage the word of god and get fill your mind with the scripture fill your mind with the scripture to a point that to a point that even in your dreams you can quote scripture i'm not saying that maybe you will not be able to quote it verbatim like our father and many of us praise god but you can be you can start from somewhere are you with me because the important thing about quoting scripture is not only quoting verbatim is to is to be able to imbibe what you're quoting are you with me it's very very important to understand that understand the place of the word of god in your in 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 overcoming sin and the fourth thing the last thing i want also to try to put in your arsenal is fasting hallelujah uh, pr- the place of brokenness because fasting signify brokenness there are some things that you can overcome really to be very frank without fasting in fact jesus said to to the disciple after they brought this this person that they cannot in fact the the person that they cannot um cast out the demon away from them actually i uh, was it was the um um the 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 persons that um they had the issue they brought the the charge to jesus and they said that we brought that to jesus to you but your disciple because they were trying to be able like they are big guys <laughs> and they said let's pray for this person and they could not cast out the demon from the child and jesus came and said to them ah what was going on and the bible said that just lay on upon the uh, person tell the demon to come out the demon came out and the disciple were very intrigued and the master said to them this kind this kind in other words there are some things that you can never overcome without fasting this kind goes not but through prayers and fasting so it's very important to 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 include prayer and fasting when it comes to overcoming sin get ready to be inspired and transformed like never before on this divine adventure apostolic bookshelf discover the depths of divine wisdom Get ready to be inspired and transformed like never before on this divine adventure. Apostolic Bookshelf. Discover the depths of divine wisdom. Now for the practical application of walking power. I love this part. Firstly, um I want to say something like intention is more is as important as your action. Intention is as important as your action. Your intention is connected to your heart. as God have said make sure that when you seek in God's power it's not because of you're seeking it because you want fame you want name you want to be known you want people to know that oh wow this is the one that may if this man pray things happen that's the wrong intention and that's the wrong heart that's the wrong mindset in fact the reason why I saw you know it's really interesting because in scripture God actually intended to 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 make Saul the king that all of us should be celebrating by now but his heart was wrong that's the reason why god did not 
choose him to become the captain of his people. Like God's servant said in the book that um, what qualified David, qualified David to receive the anointing, to be anointed, the anointing to become king is because of his heart. While everybody was parabolating, they were shouting, they thought that they are the ones that are going to be made the king of Israel. It was their servant, servant heart. It was their servant in the bushes. Nobody saw him, but his heart was right because he was serving his father. And because of that, when, there was time, when the time came for coronation, when the time came for distinguishment, when the time came for, for allotment of, 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 of life necessity, he was chosen to become the king. Why? Because of his heart. So it's very important. The reason which why I love this book, I love this why I love this book. The first time I read it, the reason why I love it so much is that first chapter. You know, because many of us know how is it to acquire the power of God. We know prayer, we know fasting, we know giving, we know all these things. But many of us always we ignore this part of the right heart. If you look at God's servants, you will see. You will see this trait of the right heart. If you look at God's servant, what you see is what you get. His heart, he wears his heart and his, he wears his heart as a sleeve. That's the reason why God is using him so much. So if you want to flow in God's power, like God's servant is flowing in God's power, you need to ha- have the right mindset, the right heart, because your intention, like I said, is as important as your action. It's as important as your action. And the second thing he talks about also, second, my second take from this book also, uh, Life Application, is the place of a, of a genuine hunger in the pursuit of power. Genuine hunger. There was a question where I was asked, Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus said that um, uh, what we seek is what we get. I put that in my own word. God's have an action, the action that book in chapter 1. Who seek ye? Who seek you? In other words, what are you seeking? In other words, why are you seeking power? What is the purpose of you acquiring power? What's the purpose that you want God to give you the power? What is what what are you hungry for? Because whatever you're hungry for, that's what you'll be filled with. There are lots of people that we acquire that we want to hunger for God's power. They pray and fast until their long fall out. <laughs> God never gives them the power. Why? Because they are hunger for something that is not good for them. Praise God. It's very important. The place of hunger, the right hunger, genuine hunger when it comes to the acquisition of power. That's what God's Sabbath talks about in this book profoundly. I, I, I encourage you to read it and not only read it, imbibe it and make it that this book should be second to your Bible. When you read your Bible, when it comes to power, there is no, there is no, I've read many books, there is no book as that dealt so profoundly about power. Amen. The mechanics of power like this book did. Amen. So it's very important for you to understand the second part. The place of genuine hunger in the pursuit of God's power. The thought in talk about the place of persistency. I love this one because it's very, very important because many of us, we, 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 we engage, we try to do something. When we do it one time, it did not work. We, we, no, this is not working. It's not going to work anyway. Let me just don't try it anymore. That's what we do. So therefore, we don't see the result because I believe increment, incremental doing something, small thing over and over and over and over and over again. That's what produces result. And for example, if you take, a, if you open it, if you, if there is a hole on your wall, the water is coming through that wall, and the water is, you know, the drop of water is eating a certain part on the on your ground on the um, on the cement. If that if that water keep on coming down for days and months, the first few maybe the first few moment it comes out, you never notice it. But if it keep on coming out in that same spot over and over again, if you come back for two three days from now, you see a mark there. You see a mark there. That's persistency. You not see results in the acqu- in the acquiring of power if you are not persistent. Take 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 for example there now, there in 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 Genesis 29 32 35. Leah, the first time she gave birth to a child, the first child called Reuben, see me. Husband did not see her. If many of us would just give her, oh, I've tried to do this thing, it's not working, so forget it. I'm not doing it again. But she didn't give up. She gave birth to a second child called Reuben. Hear me. Still, she wasn't hurt. Praise God. She said, okay, let me do it again for the third time. She gave birth to a child called Levi. I mean, join me. In other words, husband, you have not seen me. You have not heard me. I believe now you can join me. See, that did not happen, but she did not give up. And she gave her to a guy, uh, a child called Judah. 
And today, that's why with all of us, we are here because there's a lion in Judah, in the person of Jesus Christ. So if you want to acquire power, as God's about in chapter one, you must understand the place of persistency and consistency in the acquisition of God's power. And the third thing and the, the last thing to talk about in chapter one here is the place of service. I love this one also. It's very, very important because there are many things you should, we, we, many things that you don't have to pray for when it comes to this thing. I always say to people that this is a shortcut to God's power, service. There are some things you should not pray for when you serve. There are some things you should not pray for when you serve. Like he said in, in Acts chapter, Act chapter 9, verse 6, Paul asked one of the most profound questions. If you look at all the apostles, Peter and the rest, uh, all of them just did a lot of things for them when he was on earth. They walked with Jesus, they ate with Jesus, they slept with Jesus, praise God. But no one was used as Paul was. Why? Because Paul, first of all, when he met Christ, he asked one of the most profound questions that all of us should be asking. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want? That's the question all of us should be asking us. What do I, if I acquire in power, why, 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 am I, why do I want it? What do I want from this? Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm getting very excited right now. What do you want? What do you want? That's the question. What do you, what do you, he said, he said, what, what should I do for you? What can I do for you? Not, not God give me, as God said, not God give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. It's a prayer for children. It's a prayer for children. That's what many of us, you know, many of us, we don't walk in the power of God. Why? As God said, because we, we have the prayer, God, give me power. Give me power. And God is asking, why should I give you power? And God checked the answer. Ah, this person wants power because he wants, he wants, he wants to be braggadocious, walking so that everybody will see that is the is the latest fashion in town. That's the wrong mindset. That's the wrong intention. That's what God has, God has said in this book. That's my take here. It's very important for you to understand service when it comes to the acquisition of God power. Because if you don't serve, you cannot be served. And God said something profound. Also, I love my take from this book. He said that um, those that served should they expect to be served if you serve you serve with somebody the intention is so that it's not it's not it's not so that people can serve you you serve because you serve from your heart because it's the right thing to do because you know there is benefit in service this is the quickest way to power quickest way to power as god's haven't said because through service comes impartation Two service come with that. You know, it's his evidence in our ministry. It's evidence in the life of so many of our men of God. So many people that our, our, fa- our father have come in contact to that are serving, that are, are still serving. Praise God. So service is one of the shortest ways to acquire power. As you serve today, I believe God is going to take it to your own new level because um, uh, only those that serve selflessly are qualified for an ongoing flow of God's power. Amen. Amen. And I pray that you will understand that. Get ready to be inspired and transformed like never before on this divine adventure. Epistolic Bookshelf. Discover the depths of divine wisdom. In today's lesson, we have explored chapter one of Walking in Power. We discovered the importance of the right heart in the acquisition of power. And we wanted to talk about, um, um, ask the question, who seek ye? In other words, what do you seek? We also talk about the importance of service when it comes to acquiring the power of God. And, and I pray that you have gotten something from this, um, from this episode today. And like I said before, when I started, it's our aim in apostolic bookshelf to empower, to enrich, to inspire, and also to, to uh, create a discussion amongst believers 
all around the world. That's our intention for this program, is for people to be talking about what we're talking about here. Because the body of Christ can only move forward when we are empowered and when we are when we are harmed with the right information because there are a lot of information out there that is not right for us so what we aim to do as apostolic chef is to open you up to some of these things that you all already need to know and i'm so excited and i'm so proud i'm so elated that god's servant material provide all this wonderful 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 detail mechanics when it comes to ministry. I always tell people that this this book, this book, Walking in Power, is one of the mechanics of Apostle of Apostle John Suleiman's ministry. I want to also take this opportunity also to thank my father and Lord, Apostle John Suleiman, for this we are privileged. And I and I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed also the previous episode. And by God's grace, our well, next episode is coming and I pray that you tune in also for that one. And we'll continue also in chapter two in our next in our next episode of Walking in Power, which is going to be on the prayer connection. And my name is Paul Quisalam again, and I hope to see you here same time, same place. And God bless you. Get ready to be inspired and transformed like never before on this divine adventure. Apostolic Bookshelf. Discover the depths of divine wisdom. Thank you for joining us on this journey of enlightenment and empowerment. Stay connected with us on our social media platforms to receive updates. And don't forget to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons to spread the inspiration. We value your thoughts and feedback, so leave your comments, questions, and reflections by emailing us. Looking for more life-transforming wisdom? Visit www.amazon.com to explore several books by Apostle Johnson Suleman's. Tune in again for more impactful episodes.